we move on to Sunday. Let's get right to work here. November 28th, we start 1 p.m. Eastern. Pittsburgh Steelers, 5-4-1, and 2-2 two and two on the road at Cincinnati Bengals, 6-4, and 2-2 two and two at home. We're at Paul Brown Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio, 42 Fahrenheit, mostly cloudy, 10 miles per hour. Nice to see Tease joining us, our guy Tease. Love it. All right, here we go in Steelers Bengals. We have the Bengals opening up at minus three and a half. At Pinnacle, that's moved 10 cents from minus 105 to minus 115. Other books have moved it to four, and some books have moved it to four and a half. This total opened up at 45, and there is one book that I see that's showing a 45 and a half. When we move over to the cash flow in this Roethlisberger Burrow matchup, there's 3,127 tickets in, 42% of the tickets, 48% of the cash are on the Bengals. Uh, interesting that the Steelers would still be a public bet here. Surprising. Now, there's only 3,000 tickets in, so let's not draw too much to that. Then we see 74% of tickets on the over. We don't have the cash flow yet. Steelers coming off a wild 41-37 loss at the Chargers. With all the injuries, you know, I, I moved on the over and the Chargers team total over, and, God, it was just too easy. No TJ Watt, no Minka Fitzpatrick, no Joe Hayden. The Steelers couldn't get any stops. The Chargers got 533 yards of offense. That's the eighth most the Steelers have allowed in the game in franchise history. Now, at this point, Minka Fitzpatrick and TJ Watt are expected back. Uh, Joe Hayden is questionable, but Minka and TJ expected back. A uh, Big Ben went 28 for 44 for 273 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Deontay Johnson caught seven passes for 101 yards in the touchdown. Chase Claypool caught five passes for 93 yards. Najee Harris couldn't get going, 12 carries for 39 yards, five catches for 20 yards. They couldn't get pressure on Herbert. They sacked him twice. They hit him five times. It was Alex Highsmith doing almost all of the damage, one and a half sacks, three quarterback hits for him. Cameron Sutton had 10 tackles, one for a loss, and an interception. Tight end Eric Ebron suffered a knee injury. He's listed as doubtful. Offensive lineman J.C. Hasnauer injured his pectoral. Uh, we're still waiting on that reevaluation at this point. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod was placed on reserve COVID list. Wide receiver, kick returner, and useful. And Isaiah Loudermilk inactive last week, questionable this week. Bengals coming off a dominating 32-13 win at Las Vegas, fresh off their bye week. Joe Burrow was just 20 of 29 for 148 yards, one touchdown, no interception, lost a fumble, but he was very professional. Tyler Boyd had his was his number one target, six catches for 49 yards. Jamar Chase continued to have a quiet game games statistically, but he did catch a touchdown pass. Three catches, 32 yards. Leads all rookies with eight touchdown passes. Evan McPherson looks like a – when I watch Evan McPherson go kick a ball, I expect him to cash it. I expect him to get through the uprights. I think he's going to become a top kicker in the league if he's not already. Joe Mixon had 30 carries for 123 yards, two touchdowns. As Cincinnati's defense limited the Raiders to 278 yards. That's just the second time the Bengals held an opponent to fewer than 300 yards a game. You have to decide as a capper whether you think the Bengals' defense is improving or were they just healthy and going up against a terrible offense in the Raiders. Eli Apple had an interception. Team had two sacks, five quarterback hits. They stopped the Raiders on their first six third downs. Defensive tackle Tyler Shelvin and wide receiver Auden Tate were both inactive. C-Mac, we start with you. Steelers, Bengals, take it away. Yeah, this one's a Bengals team that I really, really like. But all year, the Steelers, at this price, I've loved to take. You know, I took it last week. It was six. They covered against the Chargers where they had to come all the way back, obviously, in a shootout. I wanted to ask you real quick, what can you get the Bengals team total at right now, Jimmy? Real quick. Uh, let me shop at a couple of books because okay. first I'll off, keep going. I Bet 365 is never going to give you a good one. So I could just – I'll start with Bet 365, but they, you know, they want to they want to sneak in through the window and take your wallet. The team total right now for the Bengals is at 25 and a half at Bet 365. But I'll keep shopping. Yeah. That's minus um, on either side. This is what I kind of wanted to lean on. To me, I don't want to lay four and a half with the Bengals. I thought their defense coming off the bye – played well but a Raiders team that's not very good right now you know we already went through that they're not going downfield but before the bye this Bengals defense was starting to get gashed maybe they needed the week off you saw the Steelers last week but you talked about Watt and them being back I think it helps them out but the Steelers defense hasn't been you know no, no nothing really good all year that defense is not you know steel curtain or anything like that shit uh, I thought that, the total was yeah see, man, let me interrupt you because this is wild just to, for everyone to know how how bet 365 is so rich they're at 25 and a half either side minus 115 
The team total at Pinnacle, the over 24 and a half is at plus 101. So you get a plus wow, line of 24 and a half. And the under is at minus 117. So that that's a much, much, much better line if you're looking for the over. And I didn't I apologize for interrupting. Take it away. No, thanks. Because uh, the Bengals, what I saw early on, they played a lot of unders. I think it's five of their first six, six of their first seven. And then that defense, you know, Ravens ripped them, the Jets, the Browns. I see them scoring points here. I, I, I know that their first meeting, that's when that was their slew of unders early on. Both team, both defenses were playing well, uh, and they're not right now. And they beat the Steelers at Pittsburgh 24-10. Uh, I don't love the Steelers team. The problem is I don't want to lay four and a half with the, with the Bengals here. You know, this is one that needs to be three or lower, even though I love Joe Burrow and this team. So for me, I look at the full game over, or I want the, this Bengals team total over. I think they can score on Pittsburgh. I'm not impressed by this defense. I know it's a little recency, but this defense was giving up points before last week to the Chargers, period. You know, Now they're going to have to go on the road, and you expect them to play well. I know Watt was out last week. I still like their team total a little bit, and I'm looking at this game over here. And that's it. Interesting breakdown. Wow. And by the way, it's three and a half still at Pinnacle. Three and a half still at Pinnacle. And uh, okay. Bengals three and a half is only minus 115. God, it's the best uh, book available. Babano, take yeah. it away. Steelers, Bengals. Yeah, I'm probably going to lock it in and make it official over the total in this game at 45. Uh, I understand we could get TJ Watt back and we could get Mika Fitzpatrick back on this Steeler defense. But man, that defense without those guys against the Chargers, it was hideous. I mean, the breakdowns left and right down the field. Uh, receivers basically left wide open, uncovered. I mean, some of them just dreadful. How do you leave Mike Williams all alone there in the final two minutes of that fourth quarter? Well, that's going to happen when you have no pass rush. Oh, yeah, TJ Watt being out hurts that. Oh, that's going to happen when one of your best players in the secondary, actually, he is your best player, Minka Fitzpatrick's out. Uh, it was just an absolute mess for the Steelers on defense against a very, very dangerous Chargers offense. If you're going to have those kind of mistakes and you're going to have these kind of key injuries on that side of the football against Joe Burrow, we've seen this offense be good enough to capitalize. They've got balance. Mixon's been running the ball uh, lately. It's going to be tougher against Pittsburgh's run defense. Cameron Hayward had a hell of a game. we got to give him some credit. What a game he had against the uh, Chargers. Did everything he could for that defense to try to help them to that victory. Uh, but we'll see if they get Watt and Fitzpatrick back, even if they do have one or both of them back. You know, I think at home you're going to see Burrow in this offense be able to move the ball enough uh, in this game. I still like that receiving core that the Bengals uh, have to work with, too. When you look at Jamar Chase, you look at T. Higgins. Now, they do have Tyler Boyd questionable for this game, the third receiver. He left the uh, game against Las Vegas uh, in the fourth quarter. He was limping a little bit, uh, but it's definitely not something that looks overly serious. So I think there's a decent chance you'll see Boyd uh, on Sunday uh, for the Bengals. Uh, on the other side of the equation, look, you can say that it was a Chargers defense that the more you watch them, the more you're under, you're, the more you're unimpressed, or at least the more I'm unimpressed when I see the Chargers defense. But look, Ben Roethlisberger made some plays throwing the football. Uh, you know, he did everything he could to try to keep that team in the game. Good completion percentage, no mistakes. You know, and in a game where, to be honest with you, they didn't really run the football well with Najee Harris. Most of the offense came through the air, but. You know, it was one of Ben's better games throwing the ball to Johnson, Claypool, uh, Eric Ebron, the tight end, all made plays uh, down the field in the passing game. You know, I think they're going to be able to move the ball a little bit here against the Cincinnati uh, Bengals defense. Let's not forget the Raiders offense has not been the same since Ruggs' incident because there's just not as much that you have to defend uh, in that uh, receiving core. So I think the Bengals, or the Steelers rather, can move the ball. And while the Pittsburgh defense, they might be healthier, they might get Watt and Fitzpatrick back, which is obviously going to help. Look at this schedule of offenses and quarterbacks lately prior to the Chargers game that Pittsburgh played. Jared Goff and the Lions in a rainstorm that day. Chicago, and even Chicago got 27 points in that game. Yeah. Cleveland, Baker, Mayfield with an O-line that day that was ravaged by injuries, and Baker Mayfield's not played well lately. They played Geno Smith and the Seahawks. They played Denver with uh, Bridgewater, and that offense has been hit or miss. Like, they have faced a very, very unimpressive, 
weak slate of opposing offenses, opposing quarterbacks. I think Pittsburgh's defense gets challenged here by this Bengals team. I know the first game was an under, but I like these divisional rematch situations where the one game maybe stays under. I think the second game often you see a little bit of a role reversal and vice versa. You could see the first game go over, maybe the second game stay under. I think we'll see enough points here. I like over 45, and I'll make that official. Over 45 minus 110 official. I, I, I have a vividness bias of these two teams playing, you know, knock them down, drag them out, yeah. defensive football. And that's clearly affecting my first instincts when I look at this game. But I'll have to dive deeper. C-Mac, do you want the steel or the Bengals team total or the full game over? What are you thinking? I'll let you know by the end because that, uh, that always gets me too, Jimmy. I have the bias of these teams playing smash mouth uh, under, but – Something just leads me. Uh, this Bengal team scores, and I think even the Steelers. Uh, you never know from week to week in the NFL. I, I mean, Steelers give up 41, you know, and they could give up 16. So, But I, I'm leaning the team total and even the over. I'll let you know. Okay. So let's move forward. 